I bet with Interbet only. They're a fantastic site. I've never had any issues with them. They are very professional. There's never a problem. You deposit money, two seconds later it's in your account. You withdraw, which I do very occasionally. And uh, I believe it's also two seconds it's in your account. The penultimate race on the card, race nine, the WSB Newlands now open. Pinnacle stakes over 1,200 metres goes at 16.05. It may be the penultimate race, but it is the last leg of the place accumulator and the last leg of the pick six. And it is a tough, tough race to try and find the winner. Before we discuss the chances of the various runners, we'll have a look at a couple of reruns. El Sakit, interesting runner. Of course, he ran second at Hollywood Betts Gravel way back on the 31st of July last term when running second in the Mercury Sprint. We'll show you that run. Also number eight coin spinner when finishing third at Hollywood Betts Gravel on the 13th of March. And then interviews with Vaughan Marshall, Stuart Ferry and Tony Riverland. Gallic Princess, Rhea Karari still got about three or four lengths to make up. Shanty Man's on the outside. Coming down to the 200, Ultra Magnus the leader. Gallic Princess, Rhea Karari's now starting to get its stride together. MK's Pride on the inside and Pearl of Asia's taking off. And Elsa Keat is going to go to Pearl of Asia. Pearl of Asia from Elsa Keat and MK's Pride. That's coin spinner, the leader, bold ransom, Socrates, Pearl of Asia, tempting fate on the inside. Coin spinner, the leader, Socrates, a big runner, tempting fate on the inside. Bold ransom to the outside. Socrates digging in deep down the inside, coin spinner and tempting fate. And it's Socrates, just the leader. Socrates, tempting fate. Socrates won it. Second tempting fate, coin spinner. And Altissimo is involved with Pearl of Asia. Yeah, he, you know, he came back to form the other day in the Info Flight Stakes at Maritzburg. He ran a very pleasing race. Um, he's drawn two, and Samongo is very happy with him. So, you know, I think he'll be he'll run a very nice race, very good race. Yeah, Cartel coming back from a bit of a break. He may just need this, but in saying that, he can uh, run well fresh. So, you know, and obviously, very rarely, I mean, he's, he's consistently the trier. So if he comes out fresh and well, he'll, and uh, puts in his best performance, he, yeah, he'll, he'll be right there. Yeah, Tim obviously went off for a bit, but last couple of starts he's been consistent. Uh, so yeah, listen, he's fitting well at home and expecting another big effort from him. Race, but I'm just battling to find the right races for him. But he's he's back to his best. Um, last time, I, I, you know, I made it clear that there were issues with him. He didn't have a great blood picture. He had a problem, a little bit of a problem with the foot we were battling with. But this time he's at his best, and um, of course it's a tough race. It's very there's some really great horses in the race, but. Um, I think we'll see Coinspin at his best, so the race will tell how good he really is. Well, as you heard there from Tony Riveland, a uh, very tough race. And uh, El Sakit, Rahil, a very interesting runner because he clearly has loads of talent. We saw him running second in the Mercury Sprint, but since then he's only had two starts and there's been interruptions. He hasn't raced since December. He's one of the co-favourites in the early market at 4-1. to one. They're betting 4-1 to one the field, even though they're only nine runners. When you think about it, you've got Ambiorix, who won a grade one as a two-year-old, showing signs of coming back to his best. El Sakit is a grade one performer. Tempting Fate is a grade one winner. Battle Force is a grade one winner. And then, of course, you've got a uh, coin spinner, a young gun, a young three, well, not a young three-year-old anymore, but certainly an emerging three-year-old. Love Bomb is back for another crack. She goes every week over any distance. Trip to Africa, probably need the run. Cartel Captain might need the run. And Ishnana, maybe the one who's... Uh, a little out of his depth, but it's the kind of race where I think you've got to throw the field in. I don't have an outright first choice. Uh, if pushed into a corner, I'd give the benefit of the doubt to Ambiorix because of his draw and because of the fact that maybe, maybe he's just coming back to his best form. But healthy respect for El Sakit, tempting fate, battle force, coin spinner. It's a tough race. It's a tricky last leg in terms of the pick six and the place accumulator. And as you mentioned, El Sakit, he's had these two rounds after that cracking second to Pearl of Asia. I've made him a horse to watch out for. The, I see that the blinkers have been put on and he has run a second over this 1200 meter trip. So I'll say keep the horse to keep a close eye on, but an extremely tricky race. And unlike you, I'm, I'm not too quite sure who could be the winner in this race. So I may be, just be tempted to include the field into the last leg of the pick oh, six absolutely. and just hope for a bomb is out. Um, absolutely putting the field in the last leg of the big six. I'm not trying to, to, to single out the winner here, but 
every single one of the nine runners has, has a chance to a greater or lesser degree, with the possible exception of Trip to Africa, who will probably find the 1,200 meters too sharp. Uh, but I learned a long time ago, if, you, if you're going to put eight horses in a race, you might as well put the field. Don't leave one out. Don't leave two out, because you may come to regret that decision. It's a tough end to both the place accumulator and the pick six. It's not the last race of the card. We've still got race 10 to come, but it's going to be an exciting pinnacle stakes over 1,200 metres. And I'm looking forward to seeing the likes of Battle Force and Tempting Fate and El Sakit. Strong race, good race. Uh, my name's Danny Diliberto, founder of Ladles of Love. It was founded back in 2014. Communities we, s we work with are all over the peninsula and um, we're working with 138 beneficiaries now. We've grown exponentially. Um, we've been able to do that because of all the kindness that we have experienced um, from individuals and corporates such as uh, Interbet who just want to be part of the change.